and welcome to your WrestleMania questions answered. I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. Joining my own darling always, Michael Sidgwick from What Culture, to answer all of your burning WrestleMania questions. But before we get into it, if you're a fan of this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and of course YouTube. Hmm. <laughs> wherever you get your podcast from, where we do daily wrestling podcasts, where we review Raw, SmackDown, the show formerly known as NXT2, but. It'll be done by AW Collision pay per views, premium live events. We have interviews, round table discussions, and a round of the week complete. A big quiz, of course, on wrestle culture. As I said, though, joined by Michael Sidgwick to answer all of your WrestleMania themed questions. Uh, we even did an AW Q and A, which is available as a podcast right now. What culture wrestling podcast? Wherever you get your podcast from. Um, but yes, we're trying to answer as many mania questions as possible because Michael Sidgwick, it is just. Until we fly out to Philadelphia. Uh, thank you to everyone who's joining us live on YouTube. Send us your questions in the chat. Um, but a question I wanted to start with um, is a question that many people have lied awake at night worrying about in the build to WrestleMania 40 because Michael Sidgwick, Cody Rhodes finishing the story, defeating Roman Reigns and winning the world title feels as inevitable as Chesterfield winning the National League title, for example. Uh, one of those things has happened. The other one, not quite yet. But he couldn't get screwed again, could he? Well, 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 well. Here's what I'm thinking, right? WWE, and it's hard to wrap one's head around this, because of the years and years and years and years and years <laughs> of Twilight Vince McMahon, my brain is broken, booking in which we didn't really give a toss about one raw to the next or the minutia of certain plot developments. You would have ideas over who to push, invariably the wrong idea, and maybe a big match or two we'd have in mind, but it was chaos, whim-driven chaos for so long. Now, because of that long, 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 long time, um, and the sort of cynicism that crept in during that period, it's easy to forget that these days, WWE has got it switched on. Mm. They've got the next directions planned well in advance. They know what they're doing potentially what, a year from now, mm -hmm. 18 months from now, um, et cetera, et cetera. The thing is, is that the year from now, the six months from now, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, at one point in the incredibly recent past, did not have Cody Rhodes as universal champion. Mm-hmm because Cody Rhodes, at one point in the very recent past, was not going to be in the Universal Undisputed WWE, whatever it's called, championship yes. match at WrestleMania. So I know it probably was the plan, and then The Rock has just disrupted everything, mm -hmm. and maybe it is the plan again. But what I'm driving at here is that it wasn't, it wasn't, it was and it wasn't the plan at separate points in 2024, and we're still just in March. Um, maybe that idea of WWE under Triple H's stewardship, abandoning those old weird philosophies of, oh, I'll just do Raw this week, or we'll change it when the show's unfolding and all the rest of it. Maybe it is whim-driven. Who the hell knows? Um, at one point, the plan was for Cody Rhodes to be in the title match. At one point, there wasn't. What is it as cut and dried as... You have to do it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like a lot of wrestling fans, WWE fans, at this point, when we are just over... Nine days! ...away from WrestleMania, the mentality is, because of what happened last year and how much of it, uh, a mistake it was feared to be and how you can't possibly do that again, the mentality is, you can't do it again. Mm. Can you? Look, they would be stupid not to... Cody Rhodes sells tickets for shows mm -hmm. to a quite ridiculous and staggeringly impressive extent by the standards of 2024 and the preceding few years. How much, Wilborn, do ticket sales count to WWE's bottom line in the grand scheme of things? Mm -hmm. 
not as much as you'd like to think. Next to nothing. Re next to nothing compared to rights fees. This is a company that generated eye-watering profits when they didn't even tour during 2020. And yeah. Got, uh, a decent amount of 2021. Um, it's just a, a fable that I'm telling to the viewers and the <laughs> listeners here. It's like arm's length, arm's length at all times with this promotion. Mm -hmm. Just because you, the wrestling fan, the member of the WWE universe, has this mentality at this point, and I, I, I've got it as well, of you have to. <laughs> like, you can't <laughs> yeah. do this. How many times have they, in fact, done this? They did it under Triple H last year. Roman Reigns was recently interviewed. I cannot remember the name of the outlet he spoke to. I apologize if you could bring that yep. up. Uh, quickly while I talk here. And he said, as long as they cut these insane checks, you know, I'll stick around. I'll keep doing it. Was it Pat McAfee? Was the Pat McAfee show, maybe? I don't know. I'd never watch that as long as I live. That's well, great. it's up to you to do it. Um, <laughs> ultimately... With pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> ultimately, it's just a bit of a... A warning, I guess. You just there's no guarantee. They could. What's the advantages and disadvantages? The advantages are of if you're them, mm -hmm. there has to be the temptation of we bought an extra three hundred and sixty-five days of this. Can we not do it again? Mm -hmm. What does Triple H love more than heavy metal music <laughs> and dry television? Long title reigns. Yeah. Those are his three things. That's a Triple H trifecta, <laughs> right? All I'm saying is it's not out the realms of possibility. What did Cody Rhodes not say seven days ago? Things might change. There are, what, four episodes of WWE main roster television until WrestleMania. Correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. He has got 10 hours worth of time to do the babyface promise. He hasn't done it yet. He hasn't come out and been the babyface mm -hmm. and said, it's my time, I'm doing it, on television. I know he said something at the the post-Rumble press conference. Yeah. But he hasn't done it. Will Bourne, you're the eternal optimist. Well, I... I what, are, what percentage are you putting him at finishing the story? I'm putting it at 99.999. I'm playing devil's advocate and I'm doing you all a favor by reminding you, arm's length, we've been here before. I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm exactly the same in terms of... What's your percentage? Of, yeah, 99.99, like you say, because of... Yeah, it's, it's a bit like the, the punk in Chicago thing. I'm almost convinced it's going to happen, but it might not. It, it will. I don't mean punk in Chicago yeah. is in tonight. I mean the, the you know first, the first dance. dance. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think... What I took away, I took away two things from Elimination Chamber. Number one, I really like Western Australia. I might have to go and visit there. Uh, and number two was, yeah, sometimes WWE nowadays, even if it's the most predictable thing and everyone has said that's what's going to happen, they don't change plans. Predictable doesn't always necessarily mean bad. You know, Becky Lynch went in the chamber. Fine, great. That's exactly what you want to see. Uh, same with Drew, for example. Um... So I'm hoping, yeah, that they go, yeah, I mean, we could drag it on another year or we could do, you know, Rock Roman with the title in, on the line is would be do huge business. The record that's not really a record uh, for Roman to surpass is still there. And we could hoy in uh, a few other people. Damien Priest could do a cash in, for oh, example. God, you know, no. you know, but in terms of like getting him to that, yeah, yeah, we've yeah. got enough people that we can just hoy in. It wouldn't be bloodline adjacent, but uh, bollocks, who cares at this point? We're just making money hand over fist. And whenever you have him on telly, the right, the rating spike, obviously. But on the other hand, let's just get on with this. Have Cody win the title, defend it regularly, um, have some amazing matches, and, you know, eventually build up to Gunther, for example. We've got a good question to read in a minute about next year's main events. Um, and you can still do Rock Roman with no title. He doesn't need it. It's the, who's the they want it. They would want it to be the biggest match possible. Yeah. That's all yeah, I'm yeah. saying. What I will say, maybe to round this off or whatever, is that through accident or design, calculated strategy, 
or years and years and years of just the arm's length, you cannot really trust WWE, is that even though I'm 99.9% certain of, you can't do it again, that 0.01, I think, Mm -hmm. uh, (laughs) percent of doubt will, in the right moments, feel like a much bigger number on the night. We'll get the spot that's everyone's booked of the Samoan spike into the spear, the carbon copy of last year, which is allowed because of the, what I'm assuming, bloodline rules that we're going to get. Um, but you'll get you'll get a kick out, but you'll think for a split second, he's not kicking out here. In the moment, like in a great pro wrestling match, even with a winner nailed on, if they can craft the feeling, the tone... I, I'm dynamite. I sometimes get the, yeah. oh, Christ, he's going to win, is he? Or she's going to, no, it's obviously not. That's the art of a great match, but it will run even deeper mm-hmm. on night two of WrestleMania because of all, it's, again, this, this promotion just cannot stop taking undeserved dubs. <laughs> <laughs> How have we reached a point? Like Tony can't twist the trick by trying to be good, you know? Mm. That's the big, big failure of <laughs> AEW. He's tried to be good because quite clearly... The trick is, if you want to run a effective wrestling outfit that makes money hand over fist, what you have to do is be awful for decades <laughs> in terms of being aligned with your fans, with the idea being, oh, when we finally get good, it'll be really dramatic because we've been bad and antagonistic for so long that there's always a chance they'll try and kick your ass. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, speaking of undeserved dubs, uh, shout out to Sailor Airman in the chat who says, Happy Monday to the only real wrestling journalist left out there. Thanks very much. <laughs> who always reports the truth about how NXT is the greatest show of the week. Where's Hamphlet? I need more pro-fed takes. Um, he's not feeling great today, and with it being so close to WrestleMania, we all agreed, yeah. Stay away for a day or two, and hopefully he'll be back for... Oh, if he's well. Hmm. Don't just come in because you like the Fed, mate. I know you like the Fed. You've made it crystal clear at this point that you like the Fed. I was like trying to temper him. Like, you could just record like a voice note if you want to put over the punk thing on Raw. You know, we'll just we'll just play it on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't come in. Um, Matt Raines, speaking of which, in the chat. The number one mega fan. I always appreciate it. Uh, Matt says, good morning, King and the pride of Chesterfield. Mwah! You should watch this. Um, it's disgusting. He, did, he didn't even Febreze it. I need to. But you do, because it's Why in direct I? contact with your armpit. Uh, the uh, bloody part-timer, Hamlet this is, is probably off practicing hoops. You know what's weird? Go on. Well, sorry, we'll get to your question imminently. We're really happy that you send the questions, and we're really grateful. Is that I know what it's like to be the parent of a very small child, mm-hmm. and I seem to recall that on the daily... You have to do loads of washing, mm. like actual loads, mm. because children are... Oh, they get through it, yeah, yeah. So surely there's been an opportunity for you to wash that. Just wash it late at night, hang it up, and it'll be ready for you clean the next day. No. no I, this was... I wore this in anticipation of our league win. I watched us win the league in it. And then after that, I mean, out of sheer pride, why would you want to take it off? Because you can wash it and wear it again. What's the question? Um, what do you think they will main event Mania 41 both nights? Cheers, brothers. 12 days. Yes, 12 days till he takes on Hamlet in the uh, basketball challenge. Oh, but I've got to get my life in order before <laughs> all of this. What's going to main event? Well, that's the thing, right? Is that before The Rock got goated again as Hollywood Rock, I was thinking my fantasy booking personally would be that Killers in the Jungle oh my God. versus Cody and Seth is night one. And this is before they inserted the step of if the Killers in the Jungle win, bloodline rules. Yeah. Um, if we don't, mano y mano, no bloodline in the main event, which is a stipulation they probably should have booked about three years ago, <laughs> but we, we might yeah. be getting there in the end. You could still do... He could still do Killers in the Jungle. Rock was a little bit reticent to acknowledge his tribal chief, Roman Reigns. It's pointed that he calls himself the final boss. 
Mm. That feels like something that Roman Reigns... It feels like there's an inbuilt response to Roman Reigns. Like, on his... It feels like something Roman Reigns will turn around and say, you're not the final boss. Like, he literally has to beat you to get to me. That means I'm the final mm -hmm. boss. You're a prick for saying that. You've been prick all along. We're going to have a falling out. And there's going to be some tension within the night one WrestleMania main event. So I thought that's how it was going to play out. And then he could do Cody's the champion, then do Rock versus Roman, WrestleMania 41, mm -hmm. the match they've wanted to do for years. Yes. They found a way to mess it up, but, you know, God love them. They're still the number one. <laughs> but now I'm a little bit, meh. And that is because Cody versus The Rock is, I'm frankly, at this point, a much more appealing prospect than Cody versus Roman Reigns. Mm. The Rock on Instagram is just a better heel than the tribal chief Roman Reigns. Contrast these... One of them, Cody and Rock, one of them records a promo, the other one responds on TV, and vice versa. Mommy, my mommy, shut the fuck up! <laughs> How incredible that is versus, oh, well, I've got my Bullet Club cufflinks on, and Roman Reigns just... You know really annoyed me about the SmackDown? The revisionist history. Mm. Battleground 2013 was not the first time the Shield got beat. Mm. Maybe it was the first time that Roman and Shield, uh, Seth, as a tag team within the Shield, got beat. Mm. But the Shield had been beaten before, so don't insult my intelligence there, please. And then Roman was like, well, you know, you can't trust uh, Seth. You cannot trust Seth Rollins, because you might remember in 2014, he turned his back on me, that means he's going to turn his back on you. Well, how bothered are you, Roman? Because you fucking reformed the Shield about five fucking times afterwards. You know what I mean? I just got. I just thought revisionist history, uh, insider reactions. I didn't get much of a reference. A lack of energy. How's that better than the Rock and a cowboy hat? Mm. All I'm saying is that Cody versus the Rock. They really have something there. I can see the Rock thinking we've really got something there as the mm. one on one, and the Rock's on the board. So Matt Reigns, I do not know, but. In terms of the main event program on social media, not on Raw, I will be along for the ride. How bad was Friday without that rock Instagram drop, though? Oh, it was that so sucks. weird, yeah. Um, I'm going to go... What's my Instagram promo? <laughs> I'm going to go Rock Roman, night two of WrestleMania 41 for the Tribal Chief status or head of the table or whatever. And hope more than expectation, but I, I'm quite quietly confident. Cody versus Royal Rumble winner Gunther, night one. Not reckon they'll do that at Bash at Berlin? No, well, it, I think they're going to do something big, obviously, with Gunther there, but he has to drop the IC title, and I'm becoming less and less confident he will drop the IC title. Because Triple H books long reigns. And then they'll the, need the one, someone. someone <laughs> they'll need someone to, uh, to still have that long reign. After WrestleMania, need it. where I'm booking, don't need, no one needs it. I'm booking every single other title to change hands, basically. Yeah. Uh, and Matt Reigns also points out, love the promo notes on your hand, Sige, a la The Rock. Greatness, it was greatness, if anything. Yes, absolutely. He's, he's, he's that was his uh, wrote notes from the news, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Though. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't need no smartphone. I just look at my, I panically look at my uh, hand and stumble over my words a bit. That's what I do. Uh, Jeff Raymaker says, The Rock has said that it will make sure that Seth will lose his title during the Rock concert promo, but I haven't heard any speculation, any thoughts on how that plays out. Empty threat. I think it's going to be... I just can't imagine The Rock lowering himself to Seth Rollins' level. In fact, I'm absolutely stunned that Seth's even part of the Rock's orbit mm. at this point. Um, it, it's weird. I can't imagine the Rock having a match with Seth Rollins. Can you? Not really, no. I think it, I think it's a, just a vague, empty threat. I think they're going to beat Cody and uh, Seth, and that'll probably be the last interaction between them. I think, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they did Cody and The Rock. Like, in, I've said this before, you could do... I know he's doing a movie between, like, May and, I think, August, now more I say it's this. It's a big but, Oscar bid, what, isn't it? Is it, oh, is it the A24 yeah, one? The Mark Kerr, I think. Um, I don't know. I think I could see them doing 
Cody Rock at SummerSlam, Cody Roman 2 at Survivor Series, and then Cody Gunther. I don't know, you know, Royal Rumbles. You, you, you could get a big match out of it, but the Rumbles, the big thing at that show. So I don't know, but um, in, terms, in terms of Seth thing, I think it's just, it's him being, I'm the big boss, and he's going to disappear immediately after WrestleMania. And, yeah. and I don't think Seth's going to be champion by then anyway. So, yep. um, right, Steve Nikolakopoulos. Hasn't Great asked, work, Wilborn. Thank you. He hasn't asked us a WrestleMania question, but that also came in prior to me saying, just to get WrestleMania questions. Um, I'll answer, aren't we? Uh, Edward Shiraz Hans, as he's better known, says, uh, G'day, Shills, for TNA, probably. Uh, with MJF's injuries taking longer to heal than anticipated, who do you think his first opponent will be, and should he come, should he come back and be Keith Lee's manager? That's not a bad... Not a bad show. Who do you reckon his first? Adam it's Cole. Gonna, has to be Cole, doesn't it? Has to be Adam Cole. Well, I, nothing has to happen. That's the thing. So I keep, I try, I keep stressing this. Nothing has to happen. <laughs> you don't have to. Because like, the Undisputed Kingdom are literally the, la the loose end that no one has to be tied up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They are led by a non-threat who can't do anything because he's injured. Right. Number one. Number two, who exists to take out Someone who's already severely injured. Mm -hmm. Why am I watching this on TV? Why am I being subjected to this? And if you cross them, he'll set his monster on you who just lost the big World Title match. Yeah. What Backed up by two champions who were uh, just jobbers, basically. Aye. And, and, the kingdom, and the kingdom have just been treated as jokes. Yeah. Roderick Strong's kind of there some of the time. It's already very much like... Remember the pinnacle just stopped hanging out? Yeah. And the, the four horsemen didn't stop hanging out. They were just... And D, uh, Degeneration X, NWO, all the great stables, you know, to you know, varying degrees, um, just hung out. And he could very much believe that they were a tight-knit band of brothers who just loved hanging out, kicking ass, being dickheads. Mm. What is it about AW stables not being stables? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes they're together as a, you know, the quintet... And the rest of the time, that's not a thing. Mm. It's the dumbest thing ever. I've said this before. I apologize if I'm repeating myself, so I'll keep this succinct. The second that MGF and Cole are both healthy, just the next pay-per-view, and we're at a point now when the next one's not too far away, just do a 15-minute urgent bloodbath, unfussy, wronged man versus his betrayer, gets bloody vengeance, and then find a way for MGF to turn heel. I do not need to see a build. I do not need to see a range of emotion like we got the first time. I've seen enough better than you, baby, adjacent stuff for a lifetime. And it will just be a... I just think it's something that AEW's completely moved past and it needed to. I would just want to see this blood-splattered 15-minute grudge match. You wronged me. I'm going to kick your ass. No build. Just... Do it and get it over with. Yeah. And surprise people as well. Don't do melodrama. Don't do this long build. Don't strain for epic. Just get it over with. Mm -hmm. What more motivation could these guys need to wrestle each other at this point? But we're not going to get that. I'm dreaming. Uh, well, RW Weathers says, as a pitch, MJF debuts at Mania to screw Cody again because, like I've always said, uh, he will lose. Cody can't win. Won't win. He can't win. I've invested too much cash into this bloody goated podcast. I will be proven right. You will acknowledge him. God damn it. MJF to debut at WrestleMania? No. Not this one, at least. Not this one, at least. He might debut at WrestleMania down the line. Um, wouldn't it be awesome, though, if, like, all... This is just a bit of a thought exercise, right? All... No respect intended to Roderick Strong, right? Who's... Great. Oh, yeah. Great, great, great in the ring, et cetera, et cetera. But, like, can you imagine that Roderick Strong moment on Dynamite where it's like, holy, they released him, and he's on AEW TV. Yeah. Like, one of the first, if only, I, I wasn't even connecting any dots there. Yeah. I was thinking, oh, he'll probably turn up. He's a wrestler, so Tony Khan will sign him. But I didn't even know he'd been released. Even something like Moxley, it was awesome, but you thought, he might turn up. It double or nothing, the first one. Mm. Um, Not everyone thought that. No. Malachi Black, you thought, oh, he's going to end up in AEW. Yeah. But it was the, what was it, the admin snafu <laughs> of like, yeah. 
oh, these didn't even bump up my release to 90 days. I'm still on 30. Yeah. Fair play to him for really going over the contract and just making sure that was correct. Um, I would have just assumed. <laughs> <laughs> what if there's someone that big on MGF's level of star just quietly releases and like Tony Khan's too nice? Mm. Anybody else would go, oh, yeah, he's gone. So Tony Khan might be too nice as well. Mm. What if someone of that magnitude is somehow able to quietly leave and just one of the biggest pops of all freaking time, one of the biggest moments of all time. What Just what if someone yeah. that big could quietly either, leave? Either way. Which is an oxymoron, can't yeah. happen, but that'd oh, be awesome. Uh, but no, he's certainly not going to do that. No, I don't see it. Um, Steve Klitschies. I've not butchered you. Yeah, he has. Too much, too much there, Steve. Steve says, incredibly excited to attend the live show. I'm sure you've received plenty of recommendations for cheesesteaks, but I implore you to try Angelo's on 9th and Fitzwater. Write it down, gents. Uh, forget finishing the story. Focus on finishing the cheesesteak. Is that is that because it's too large? Because I, I will be able to eat it. I Honestly, I, yeah, it. my appetite's disgusting. I don't think I've ever been full. <laughs> ever. <laughs> I don't care. I'll look where I want. Um, I find it so hard to get full. Like I make, right? A little aside. Uh, James Martin's Yorkshire puddings on BBC Good Food, right? Really good. 12, like the, the mixture yields 12 Yorkshire puddings, right? Mm. I've got a family of four and they just are happy with one. So that's nine left for me. <laughs> and between just little trips to the kitchen, the kids are watching the family movie. I'll go, right, there's some gravy there. I'll keep it on a simmer, dunk in the gravy. And then one of my all-time favorite leftover cheats is that Yorkshire pudding, because it uses the exact same ingredients as a pancake, you can have a Yorkshire pudding, right, lemon and sugar, and it's like you've made pancakes ah. in the past. <laughs> I uh, eat them for breakfast, and they're all gone. That's Angelo's. oh my! That looks unbelievable. Steve, thank you for that mention. And I'm eat one every day, I think. Oh, absolutely, without question. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he also said, as I said, um, he's ex incredibly excited to attend the live show, which of course goes down on day two of WrestleMania, April seventh. Uh, do join us um, in Philadelphia, Underground Arts in Philadelphia, I should say. Uh, midday is when that happens. So you have plenty of time to get over for night two of WrestleMania. A lot of time. If you haven't got tickets already, whatcoach.com forward slash tickets is where you need to head to. Um, VIP have sold out, but uh, general admission are still available. There'll be very limited merch available on the day as well. And uh, yeah, if you're hoping to try and get a photo with us, Come along, we'll, we'll be knocking around for ages. We uh, are the pulled beef in your WrestleMania <laughs> cheesesteak. Uh, OG Stem Cell, thank you as always, brings us our next question. What match and segment would you show someone who doesn't watch wrestling but wants to check it out? See you later, guys. I'm glad you said wants to check it out because yeah. there are some people who it's like they just can't, they just don't want to. No. They're not wired to even begin to comprehend it. No. What matching segment? Should we keep it mania specific? Yes. We segment shall. segment wise. And you know what? I've got a really good idea for why this is the one to do as well. Okay. Mania specific story about this, right? Is that I think one of the best I think it's better than the bloodline. Um, maybe even better than Brett versus Owen, because you know, SummerSlam, it was like I I, I kind of get it, still great, but you know, it peaked at WrestleMania. In terms of when it just began and when it ended, a nice, I know they did matches after the fact, right? But like, just in terms of a premise, the weekly television, the big match, one of the best stories they ever told, was Shawn Michaels versus Kurt Angle, right? Yes. Because you had this great, great, like they were just this great idea and this great premise and it actually meant something because at the time, they were really quite strict about the brand split. So it did feel like, oh my God, Kurt Angle's interacting with him at the Royal Rumble. Like, oh, Sean and Kurt interacting. And then they had the, I can't remember the exact angle, but didn't one of them get thrown out and then illegally eliminate the other at the Rumble? Yes, I think you're right. I was like, oh my God, they're going to wrestle WrestleMania because they've been kept apart for so long. And because wrestling fans had been starved of like a true jump, 
like whenever the promoters one from developmental, obviously they failed and then had to get good. <laughs> um, Goldberg kind of didn't count. Um, basically, it was four years of Monopoly rule, and you'd been starved for like a true like promotion jump or two wrestlers who feel like they belong in different companies. So Kurt and Sean, by the standards of the time, felt like, whoa, this is not how it's meant to be done. And that was, I can't tell you in 2005 how much that energy was needed. Nothing on the line, but yet everything on the line. Yeah. Yeah. And then the whole idea, as you'll probably recall fondly and well, is that Kurt Angle's just livid. <laughs> hey, he's got it in his head that he needs to be better than Shawn Michaels. So much so that I can do whatever he does, but better. Sexy Kurt remains one of the best things of all time. You have this completely brilliant dork. He's so good. Like that. <laughs> and it's a vicious heat angle in terms of what he does to Sherry Martel mm. at the end of it. So you get Kurt being a dork and a killer in the same segment. And in fact, you get Kurt being a dork and a killer. If you take like the dumbest daft thing he did during that wonderful build, then contrast it with how much he tried to kill Michaels in the last minute of that match. Um, you get the composite all-rounder Swiss Army knife mm -hmm. in Kurt Angle. You get the composite angle experience. That's always worth checking out. Um, and the match itself, right, is, you know how there's always that debate about, has Kurt Angle ever had a five-star match? And it was it, it really exhausting. I would argue that the one against Sean at Mania is... Mm. And this is because, right, uh, it's 2005, WrestleMania 21. Yeah, it sounds about right. Um, I'm, I've taken a year up. I'm going to go to Leeds Uni. A lot of my mates who live in Gateshead decide, well, we'll all go to either Newcastle or Northumbria Universities, which is our equivalent of college, and we'll get a shared house. And they invite some me around, um, some other lads around. Basically, everyone at school who liked the Attitude Era, would all kind of fallen off. Yeah. But let's reunite. It's the casual fan thing of WrestleMania once a year, right? And we all go around to the shared house in Jasmine, get some beers in, stay up late. It's the UK WrestleMania. And bear in mind, these people aren't the type who've gone, oh, this Ring of Honor thing, we'll get them DVDs. Mm. Or we'll still, we'll stay with the ultra casual. We'll watch it again for the crack. They were reacting like a PWG crowd <laughs> in 2005 in Jesmond, Newcastle up on Tyne suburb to Angle and Shawn Michaels. They were going insane for every single near fall. So like demonstrably, at least this is anecdotal, but eight lapsed casual wrestling fans mm -hmm. went crazy for Kurt Angle versus Shawn Michaels. I was literally there. The, the, the tired example is of course, Rock Hogan to show someone because it's just, you know, you don't really need to know a lot. Everyone knows. The you can infer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So rather than do that, you know, commonly is tend to tell people the stories of the matches. Yeah. Uh, I'll go uh, segment. I mean, there's lucky enough to be there. So I'm going to be incredibly biased and say Stone Cold Steve Austin on the Kevin Owen show. It's the main event of, you know, night one of 38, of course, but it leads so beautifully into it. And you don't need, I mean, you know, even the most casual person will know who Stone Cold Steve Austin or what was Ash call him? Stone Cold Steven. <laughs> Steven Stone. That's it. Shout out to Ash Roman. That was tremendous. Um, but everyone kind of knows who he is. And if, even if you don't, when he comes out in Texas and the roof comes off the place, you know, oh, this is big time. And all you need to do is go, yeah, this guy hasn't wrestled in like 15 years or yeah. whatever it was. Longer than that. Far longer than that, in fact. Um, in terms of a match, if you'll allow me, I haven't watched the the promo. Before. Elimination Chamber 2020. <laughs> Shayna Baszler. If you'll allow me the promo that builds up to it, if it's been, if it's been edited the right way to establish the match for them, I'm going to go a match that you and I were both in attendance. All three of us were in attendance for. I'll go Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston. Oh God! Just a wonderful cathartic moment as well when you <laughs> just say this guy's been there for 15 years because everyone knows the experience yeah. of. You know, whether it be uh, a Premier League footballer or a, a M MLB star or, a, you know, who's always been involved but never won the big one. Never won out. Yeah. 
So that's why I'd, I'd you know, in like should have ended mainly at that point, really. Yeah. If it was two nights back then, that would have been the perfect conclusion. Brian so. Danielson, there's no one better at basically conveying that he's insurmountable in a match. Mm. That's why, like, everyone says, oh, he loses too often. So every time he wrestles, I don't think he's going to lose because he's so he gets good. reset, yeah. yeah. Uh, Kid Icarus, thank you for joining us as always. Says, good day, gents. Oh. Why do you think that Cody's babyface run in WWE has been a success while in the AW, well, in AEW the fans eventually turned on him before the end? Um, I think they've kept it simple. Yeah. I think they've kept it simple. Um, what I love about Cody Rhodes, and it's what has made wrestling as it is today, uh, with competition, and it all stemmed from not necessarily All In. AEW was in the works tentatively at the time of All In, but if not a pilot... It was proof of concept, mm -hmm. like to advertisers in the TV industry. Look how big it could be. We could have this every week sort of thing. Um, Cody Rhodes is a man, and I respect him profoundly for this. And like, we needed a guy like Cody Rhodes. Just takes these incredibly wild swings, mm. whether it's setting himself on fire <laughs> or, you know, whatever. Getting a neck tattoo. <laughs> Getting a neck tattoo, <laughs> attempting to solve racism. Like yeah. being the guy to say, he was just a very, very impulsive, I'll never win the world title again, or I'll get a neck tattoo, or I will try and solve racism, if anything. Wild swing after wild swing after wild swing. Um, I will be Terry Funk in a multi-man ladder match, but I'll come out and keep fighting. I'll threaten to retire if that gets you yeah. like emotionally engaged. Just wild swing, wild swing, wild swing. In the culmination of so many wild swings, it becomes less about being ambitious and it I think a lot of people sensed oh he's very desperate isn't he very desperate to get a pop you can't like tease retirement try and solve like the problem that has plagued the United States of America since the country formed mm. like you know what I mean you cannot keep doing this and not think people will think of you in turn as like who's he think he is mm. in WWE and like, I'm, I will eventually reach a criticism when I'm talking about WWE. Don't worry about that. I will find a way. I will always find a way. It's that there is, and this is the AEW story in terms of the various things I've tried. We saw with MJF last year. It's like, you don't want to ever go to the other end of the extreme, but there is a limit to how much you should let a wrestler do. I agree. We've seen it with MJF. We saw it with Cody. Um, we're seeing it with Jericho. It's like... I think because WWE was so the opposite for so long of you can't do this, don't wrestle this way, you can't go that fast, mm. you can't do this move, you can't say this promo. It felt like allowing the wrestler to do anything and everything was like, oh, that must be the opposite of bad. The balance is somewhere, if not in the middle, then 70, 80, 30, 20, um, in terms of my personal opinion, AEW does it better but WWE should not be the dirty word. They mm. should not be the mm. dirty word. Part of them saying, no, you shouldn't do that this week or don't do all of that is, yeah, it, the TV can be dry, but at the same time, it's like you just sometimes need to score some tappings some weeks. And Cody hasn't been allowed to be too much in the way of Cody Rhodes. And it's like any kind of like storytelling or any kind of art, discipline is a big part of creativity. It just didn't feel that way for a long time because WWE was so far in the other direction. So Cody's been reined in, not to the point where you suppress his personality mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or you tell him, don't do what you're good at, don't get over. That's obviously stupid. But discipline is fundamental to creativity. And I think WWE and Cody Rhodes are a great, great fit. I, I think WWE deserves credit in terms of, I think you and I both sat here and said immediately after 39, Still going to be the guy? Is he still going to be as hot as he is right now as we head into WrestleMania 40, if that's when they decide to finally finish the story? Um, they deserve credit for the how they booked him in the interim. They deserve uh, acknowledgement, even if accidentally, them saying, ah, yeah, Cody's not going to do that, they're going to do The Rock, and then pivoting has reignited this incredible passion behind him. It's eventually going to happen. I'm really excited to see what it looks like when Cody... The fans turn on Cody and Cody goes, yeah, it's time. And we do. Because, I, you know, it's something you always look forward to. I always used to look forward to it when, you know, when Punk finally, you were like, okay, they've gone with Punk now. This is proper. Not Summer of Punk. Da, 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 da. He's world champion. And now we've got to wait about three months. And then he'll go, yeah, I'm going to attack The Rock on Raw 1000 or whatever it may be. I want to see what the heel version of Cody in WWE he, he, looks he's like. like. He was, you could argue, outside of Punk, MGF... 
Bala, who doesn't deserve, who doesn't get as much credit as he mm-hmm. deserves. Uh, Cody Rhodes is one of the best heels of the 21st oh. century. That Bullet Club T-shirt where he redesigned the logo, like people were genuinely like, "You can't do that." Broke the internet. I remember people so just going, he- great. It was so f- funny. But yeah, I think it's going to happen eventually. Um, but you're right in terms of just keeping him on a, a bit of a leash. I think is is the way the way that they've managed to keep him in this position. Uh, Kid Icarus continues. By the way, another quick question: Would you like a tease uh, of the Mania Nine finish after Cody wins? Rock challenges him immediately, but Cody still retains with help from Stone Cold Steve Austin. Or does that take away? from Roman losing, imagine the tension. I, I just don't think they'll burn through that match. I don't hate the idea, but it's in that group of ideas of like, um, that's an example here, of like Punk coming out of Cult of Personal, uh, MGF coming out of Cult yes. of Personality, or I know there's probably various other examples. There are some ideas that sound so much better and cuter in theory than they would be had they actually played out. Mm. I wouldn't have Austin involved in the main event title picture at all. I know he's got that history with The Rock, particularly at WrestleMania, but you could argue that they've already sort of diluted Cody versus Roman with The Rock being involved. Um, I wouldn't want to dilute that match any more than it already has been. I contend on the night it's still going to be white hot, oh. but they're risking it a little bit, so I just I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do. Although you could do, Rock challenges Cody, and the show goes off the air, and they say, "Hey, you have to tune into Raw. We've done it before. You've just won the title. You have to defend it again, but we'll show it the next night." That was the big show, but it was slightly different. Um, next question. Uh, I think Austin's going to get involved. I just think that like- I, I saw a great tweet actually about pairing people off. If you're not going to do Sammy involved in this, or Kevin Owens, for example, so. Heyman can just be gotten rid of by whoever. Yeah. Cody's more. Uh, and you have Jimmy and Jay. They take care of each other either on the same show or night before or that night. And then I, I, thought, I was like, okay, so you've got that taken care of. You've got Rock and Austin. That makes sense. And I was like, Jesus. Someone said, I, I do apologize. I should have written down who tweeted this first. Solo Sokoa gets taken out of the match by... John Cena, who of course Solo murdered at the, I think it was the Saudi show. I had some great guns since then. Um, but yeah, it, you know, you could, it, it, it's it's one that's of, it's just going to be so much shenanigans, like you say. Yeah, that's, uh, that's why that's why my allegiance switches from night one to night two. Bloodline and then Cody. That's why I would do dissension within the Killers in the Jungle, <laughs> and have the Killers in the Jungle lose and just keep it simple. I I, do, I, I just want Cody to win it decisively because my worry is if they do too many shenanigans they are giving themselves room to book some kind of banana skin finish mm. some kind of really thin pretext to continue the bloodline saga yeah. and it just doesn't look like cody's the man or just yeah weakening cody's win what you want is to everyone to get cleared out and then it's like another, oh, another one up yeah another five minutes yeah uh, mr phoenix says hope you all come to toronto for money in the bank weekend don't know if i've mentioned that also birds aren't real so what is lyra really lyra valkyrie therefore would just be person i suppose um a priest cash in at mania sige Cody, Roman, Seth, or Drew, what's the worst option? Damien Priest is just not <laughs> over enough. Damien Priest is the worst option. He's just not over enough to cash in. The best but, option is he makes Seth and Drew a triple threat for me, if you have to do it. it it's just, the worst option is probably Cody. I uh, keep Cody Rhodes nowhere near Damien Priest. Nowhere near. Um, the thing about Damien Priest is, what, when was Money in the Bank? I think June or July. Let me double check. Oh, God. Sorry. I've still got that picture from Angelo's up. <laughs> so say it's June, right? May, uh, it's the 1st of July because it was the, my last night out. All right, I okay. believe so. So if you cannot stay hot from July to March, and, and Priest has been cold for, he didn't just turn cold this month. Mm. If you cannot stay hot, for less than a year to the point where people are half dreading the idea of you cashing in at WrestleMania or don't believe you're credible enough to cash in or whatever. Like, do you have the stuff to be a main eventer when the whole idea is if you are being propelled, launched, 
to that level, you really should be good enough to be relied upon for years and years. And I know Damien Priest is like 41 years old, mm. but if he was truly worth holding a title in WWE, and to their credit, it actually means something to be a champion in that company these days. Like, you can't just... We're years removed from it being gender or that philosophy of the belt trying to make the man, mm. of, like, Sheamus in 2009 or whatever. We are well past that. Yeah. Being a champion in WWE actually means something. And if you cannot stay hot as an act for, like, less than a year... I don't know what a good scenario is at this point. Big MGM in the chat actually makes a very good point. The worst scenario wouldn't be Cody. It'd be Roman. Doing all this run of yeah. Reigns to just be like cashing. Cashing after he's had a match as well. I mean, that's never happening though. And again, like the fact that it would never conceivably happen, and I know they're two heels. So if you can't imagine your Mr. Money in the Bank cashing in on your top champion because it's like... One of them so much more over than the other. What are we doing here with mm. uh, Damien Priest? Um, I don't think it's been a particularly good period for him. Um, and I know WWE doesn't emphasize match quality as much as other promotions do. You still have to be able to hang in that main event level. You just do. And I have seen precious little evidence that Damien Priest can. Shout out to the guys at Business Company Network who say, we at BCN love Sidious takes and can't wait to see what develops at WrestleMania. That was a lovely comment. Thank you for that. Thank you. That sounds like um, not legitimate. <laughs> the business company network. Uh, Jeff, thank you nonetheless. Yeah, thank I'm you. Probably, uh, tweet me and I'll uh, see if you're legit. <laughs> Jeff Rainmaker's been back on saying, hello, legends. Who do you think will win the Battle Royals? I know they don't matter, but Jade Cargill winning Battle the Battle Royals. We don't know. Nothing's been mentioned yet. I didn't yet. think so. I do they, watch SmackDown. They normally hoy him on SmackDown. Well, they certainly hoy the Andre on SmackDown. I haven't mattered in a, a long time, obviously. Um, Jeff they says, haven't mattered since about, I would say, June 2014. <laughs> Jay Cargill win the women's one seems perfect for her. Pop in the moment, no payoff afterwards. I was going to say, I was going to be very cynical then, but you were completely cynical thought before me. Um it's at this point, the Andre has got such a stigma as the thing WWE doesn't care about. I tested him on whether he can remember the like, the, he got them all obviously because he's Dr. <laughs> Fed. But like, if you have I, if you ask me, name the last five Bobby Lashley, mm -hmm. 39, well, SmackDown, yeah, yeah, 38, much. don't know, Riddick Moss, you're right, I think. 37, Omos? It was main event, Jey Uso. Huh? I think it was, or was that 30? Let me get Andre the Giant, let me find this. Either way, a point out, while you find that out, I'll make my point, and I think Mr. Raidmaker has uh, said the same thing. At this point, the Andre the Giant and WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal are so are stigmatized as being this joke that no one cares about, that if anything, winning it mm -hmm. is like, oh, well, I don't think much of them. Uh, Bobby Lashley, Mad Cat Moss, Jey Uso. There wasn't one at 36, because understandably. Braun Strowman, when we were there with the oh. SNL lads. Matt Hardy, Mojo Rawley, Baron Corbin, Big Show Cesaro. <sighs> yeah. If Jade Cargill... I'd have Jade Cargill interfere in the damage control, uh, presumably Bianca Belair and Naomi tag match. I think it'd be a more of an impactful thing for her than if she won any of these battle royals. She could win yeah. both of them for me. And it, it, just, do it would feel to me like they don't care about her. It would send a strong signal that they do not care about the winners. Because they don't. Men's? Who you got? Hang on. Oh. It's time to play the game! <laughs> Time to play a game. Did it, did it, did it. I have the WWE I'm current roster looking. page open in front of me. I look directly at the hard cam, so I'm not looking at your we've screen. Done live as well. Have we ever done a live game? I don't know. I think we've done some live games. Um, I am scrolling through. When you're ready, tell me to stop. I'll give you the number of people I can see on my screen. And Pro Evo rules. Yep. That is who we're picking to win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Uh, Sige, I'm ready. Stop. You have uh, 
two, if we just go male, uh, super size. Just whoever. Oh, three, I, sh I should say. <laughs> three names. Yep. One to three. Which one are you pick him? Two. Tyler Bate. Probably going to be involved in the uh, tag yep. match. So, so that, doesn't count, that doesn't count as a skin. Oh, I can't keep going to her. Yep. Stop. Okay, you've got five names. Four. Seamus. Yes, I like Seamus. Stick with that. But then I like him, so I don't want him to win. Twist. Yes. Stop. Okay. Uh, I'll count. Yeah, any, anyone can win it, can't they? So uh, five. One to five. <laughs> no, we're not booking it. One to five. Uh, two. Uh, it's Mike Rome. The, uh, he's backstage interview, so we can't use that. That one doesn't count. Uh, I'm scrolling through again, Sige. Yeah, I'm with you, Nicholas. He's just, uh, yeah. Uh, stop. Uh, oh, three. One to three. One. Yes! I think you might pick the actual shoot winner here. It's your boy, Julius Creed. But I like Julius Creed, so we're oh, going to twist. It's all on this one, Sige. I have to stick to this, and this person's going to win. Stop. Mm. All right, Booker T. Uh, one to three. Uh, one. No, no, no. You can't pick No, that. no, I've already picked it, so. Gable Steveson. Uh, three. Grayson Bloody Waller. It's probably, it's probably uh, Grayson Waller's ceiling. I'd like that. Me and Hamlet were laughing at the back. On the it. principle of, oh, I like him, so I don't want him to win. I don't like Gable Steveson. Yes. He's just uh, null and void. Yeah. Much um, like his personality. <laughs> uh, me and Hamlet were uh, laughing about the fact that Austin Theory, despite the fact he's a previous Money in the Bank winner, I know it doesn't really matter, but it is kind of funny that Grayson Waller has a better rating on 2K than uh, Austin Theory. Anyway. Um, oh, speaking of Julius Creed, Tactical Penguin says, what wrestler, in your opinion, is being slept on or is one great night away from breaking out? Buddy Matthews is so underrated IMO, says Tactical Penguin. Can't remember the last time he talked, but I think he's his only downside. Just on Buddy Matthews, he is so explosive. I think that she doesn't have the intangibles mm -hmm. or the charisma to be a top star, and that's fine. But at the same time, he's so unbelievably talented inside of the ring. In this kind, there's no depth to it, really. Then again, he had a match with Orange Cassidy that I thought was really strong storytelling-wise. Maybe he does deserve a weekly run to see what he can do. He's never had it on a pretty big stage. Um, as part of the House of Black, he's got really cool body language and in-ring storytelling, how to present themselves as this really formidable unit. Yeah, maybe I'm talking myself, talking myself into Buddy Matthews being used more, but certainly he just doesn't have the aura mm, as a top guy. Um, but if you're that good in the ring, you should be wrestling most weeks, realistically, mm -hmm. if that's your key asset. In terms of who's being slept on, I don't think there's anyone who I watch in pro wrestling now the few companies I watch, let's just say WWE, AEW, and for my sins, New Japan, even though I know it's dead, where I'm thinking, ah, they should get a shot at the main event. Mm. Because I've been burned of like, well, it should be a really select group. You can't just put anyone and think, oh, I like watching them, or they're good in the ring. They could be a champion. It's it's different now. Mm. I've, I've learned this. In terms of who I would like to see wrestle, way more often than they wrestle, because every time I watch them wrestle, I think... You are quite incredible. Um, I think Red Velvet deserves way more than she gets in AEW. I'm always impressed by her. Diana Parazzo hasn't looked as good as she has since the debut with Red Velvet. Mm -hmm. And uh, because he's just so class, uh, Matt Seidel, he's just amazing. Mm. Matt Seidel versus Roderick Strong earlier this year was class. Matt Seidel versus Brian Danielson from Rampage not too long ago, maybe a couple of years ago. That was amazing as well. Mm. Matt Seidel um, should be doing way more. I'm not I'm not saying he's a needle mover. Mm. I just personally enjoy watching him wrestle a great deal. Yeah, it feels lazy to just say Julius Creed. But we, You've been banging the drum for him. He was in one of the first people you drafted when I did our fantasy I don't draft. think he's won... Uh, like breakthrough moment from greatness. I think I'm happy to. I just want to watch him more. Yeah. Um. I think it's he's still very very raw, 
but certainly keep him in the mix, keep him wrestling most weeks, give him more promo time, all of those things, because I think he's got vast, vast potential, but he's still very raw. Tactical Penguin, also we got back in touch when you were talking about Yorkshire Pud saying, Sidge saying he's never full, he should be a wrestler. You're starving out there, aren't Honestly, you, Honestly, like you think Adam Copeland's hungry. I am starving at all times. Uh, and in terms, I can't really give you an answer for this because in terms of the person, I was like, when are they going to realise this person needs to step up and be in title contention? Well, he is, and it's going down on April 6th, just before WrestleMania, NXT stand and deliver. Oh, yo, yo. Talking about Tony D'Angelo, of course, becoming You're, world You never stop talking about Tony D'Angelo. Sailor Airman says, post-WrestleMania, who should Tony D's first opponent for the NXT world title? No, that's a lie. No one has asked that question. Wait. Shame on you. <laughs> Shame on you. That's the thing, right? Ilya Dragunov is an exceptional professional wrestler. Like, everyone just looks amazing when they are in the ring with him, right? <laughs> Tony yeah. D'Angelo versus anyone else is going to be quite mediocre. Mm. I'm just basically at this point thinking who can make him look good? Um, Nathan Fraser. <laughs> Sorry, where am I? Right there. Uh, Nathan Fraser. When I'm cleaning windows. Running back with Dijak for me. I love Dijak. I love Tony D. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm slightly concerned that we aren't going to get a title match, to be honest. Who Dragon has got to face stacks on Tuesday night, and I do not see him getting out of there alive, if anything. So, uh, mm. yeah, shame that. I mean, it'll just it'll be great. It'll be like a family title ascension ceremony. Um, works for me. But uh, so you agree that an underling should give the boss the title afterwards? Mm. So you think that's how thing? You think that would be good? Mm. <laughs> would that be good? Moving on. Uh, so Adam Cole and Wardlow, then it wouldn't work for you. Mm. It's just, yeah, a piece of trash. Man, I would love it. If ah, no, I know. It wouldn't matter. So Cody doesn't have to finish the story if Tony D wins the title for me. That's it. I'm happy. I've got what I came here for. <laughs> hey, guys, Gunther needs a new opponent after WrestleMania. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> right, final few questions. Thank you to everyone who sent them in. Yeah, thank you. Um, Bluey says... Ah, you big fan. With the IC women's and men's world title builds, it feels like Mania's build has been better than 39. I agree with that one. Um, which has been the best built pay-per-view of the Triple H era? 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 Era. era. Um, what was I most jazzed to see? I argue the Rumbles was really anticipated because of Cody and Punk going into that. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good question. Good question. I think the build of this year's mania is if you like take like think of it as the rock's just an automatically goated guy mm -hmm. and everything he touches. I always do already do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you take that away and you go down you the like line. Now, here, don't don't be sighing over there. They've done an all right job with Seth and Drew, mainly carried by Drew McIntyre because he's class, right? Bailey and EO, it's one of those where they've had a, the right story. The plotting has been as you'd expect it. Hopefully you'd want to see ba uh, Bailey have a really good moment. It's all been a bit flat in execution. So by the numbers, but that's just Triple H's booking style to begin with. Um, Ellie and I, AJ Styles, meh. Randy Orton doesn't feel like the big star that everyone thought he was going to be again. Um, I don't know, I think probably the Rumble, probably the Rumble because um, you had a real sense of, well, Punk could win it. Mm. And maybe the drama was, well, who's going to win it in the chamber? You know what I mean? Who's going to win the shot in the chamber after the fact? Um, but I thought they did an excellent job of building Cody, building Punk. Their promo interaction was superb. And it just felt like, I remember saying at the time, they've done such a good job of getting a decent amount of, like, wrestlers over that. I mean, I didn't think much of the Rumble as a pay-per-view, but I remember thinking, 
Christ, when they come out, th that, that wrestler will get a huge reaction. This wrestler's going to get a huge reaction. Just a couple of years, or three or four years ago, you weren't getting that, were you? Oh, oh what? Just parade that? of no. you, yeah. No. But I just think, like, they did a really good job of getting a lot of people over ahead of that event. So the Rumble for me, mainly Cody and Punk, which is unbelievable on that role. Maybe, I may be biased because we're very lucky to be going in... Uh, just just over... Uh, Nine days! I'm going to say WrestleMania 40. There's not a single match on that card right now that I'm like, oh, I'll probably just duck out there. I want to see every single thing on this card right now. I'm really excited about all of it. And obviously, it it's been helped by The Rock's addition. But yeah, really, really cannot wait. Uh, final question. Um, intrigued by your answer to this one comes from John Catter. John, thank you for your donation and for your question. Thank you all. Um, you. Apologies if I haven't got to your question as well. But hey, repurpose it. Send it as a tweet at what culture WWE and me and Andy will try and answer it on the news later on this week. Uh, John Cass says, knowing how checked out on the Fed Sidge is, what was the first mania where you really didn't care about anything on it? Ooh, Great question. That, excellent it? question. Right. I've had this thing with WWE since about oh, 2001. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 2001. And then I had a dark period. Thank you, Triple H. Not genuinely thank you. <laughs> it basically, like, it was just a couple of things. Um, I'll, I'll take a few minutes with this one. Don't take too much of your time here. Part of the history of my uh, fandom with WWE post Monopoly. The Monopoly did not help. The invasion was just, I had the same response that everybody else did. Like, I've oh, completely screwed it. And yes, you understand to an extent you could see, but uh, I just uh, hated it all. And uh, it coincided the invasion getting botched, the Monopoly era being really quite bland, and just it just felt like, how have you lost what was just so vibrant and exciting two, three, four years ago? And then when it got to 2003, I turned 18 years old. Way, way more excited yeah. about partying, socialising, Adam Nicholas knows what I'm talking about <laughs> over there. Went away to university. I got back in the way. Mm. And I, you know, and by 2008, I was just locked back in. Um, it was a great tweet the other day, wasn't it? I don't know why I picked 2008. It was terrible. I was going to say, they were, there was, I think it was the tweet about this where it said they really were pushing anyone in 2008. Yeah. And it was like, oh, but it was Rio. also the most stacked roster of all time. Del Rio, Swagger. I can't remember who else was on that picture. Yeah. But yeah. So I've been basically of the opinion of WWE. And, you know, if you, you like CM Punk, WWE fans out there, he said the exact same bloody thing, so why don't you tell him to touch grass? <laughs> CM Punk always said, you know, it could be better. It could be better. So I've always had in my mind, oh, these, this new promo style sucks, or I've been buying ROH tapes, like DVDs, why can't, and Dragon Gate DVDs, and going back and watching uh, The King's Road, and I've been, like, expanding mm -hmm. my horizons. It could always be better. You could always pick from this. You could always let the wrestlers talk like that, blah, 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 blah. But I always thought, I still like it enough to keep watching every week. And you still have the hope. Mm. I'm, still, I'm not like I'm trying to be this ultra edge lord, cynic, nihilist, where I'm like, oh, I was always, I watched the pipe bomb, just like everybody else watched the pipe bomb and thought, get in, it's gonna change. You know, like, I did. It doesn't make me like, you know, a mark or naive or like less knowledgeable. I think we all had that hope that it would change. And obviously it didn't. Um, but the first WrestleMania, I was like, I'm watching out of habit. I don't think things can change. This is decidedly not for me. But nonetheless, I would like to pursue a career in this. If, it, if it's all possible, I will keep watching and keep abreast. The first time I felt nothing was WrestleMania 29. I was thinking around that time. Because 28, love Daniel Bryan. I know that botched the pipe bomb in 2011, but 2012, um, you know, I still love the punk run. I was still like besotted with CM Punk. Um, Lesnar coming back, he was awesome. And we thought, Christ, there's just enough of that energy that I like that I haven't been told over and over again. Oh, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. By WWE, you'll hate this. 29 in 2013 was the first time I was like, it's never going to be what I want it to be. And maybe I should have been less naive years and years ago. It was just something about that night. It was a bad WrestleMania, very predictable, <laughs> very familiar in those main events. So there's big matches. You want to run through the card? Uh, Ryback, Mark Henry. Correct. Del Rio Swagger. Oh, boy, yeah. 
Like Del Ziggler was cashing the next night, I assume. Yeah. Uh, Team Hell No versus Ziggler and Big E. Correct. Take a Punk. I'll not do it in order. Take a Punk. Yeah. Or um, uh, Cena Rock, Triple H, Lesnar. Yeah, when Triple H lost, he'd been forced to retire. Mm. It looked like a SummerSlam with the, the echoing of, you know, please don't go. Yeah, Love yeah, you so yeah, much. yeah. And that's all I can remember. Exact same time, according to Wikipedia, the main event and Triple H's match. Exact same. Oh, he loved going on long. I, uh, the Shield versus Big Show. Randy Orton, Sheamus. Oh, that was just okay. And Fandango versus Chris Jericho. Oh, Christ, I. Even at the point uh, where, as much as I loved Daniel Bryan and his 2013 run was being great, I still really enjoyed elements of it. To this day, if you can believe it, I still enjoy elements. I, as soon as the SummerSlam 2013 main event happened, I was like, I obviously. And I just felt nothing. Mm. I didn't feel like, oh, they're holding them down. I was like, well, yeah, they are holding them down. That's what they do here. Um, and yes, I went to WrestleMania 30, um, but I didn't, like, it was less of an outrage. I was just more, like, bored of, like, the roller decks of bad finishes just to keep the belt off Brian. Like, oh, the referee's in on the take. Mm. Oh, this has happened. And then it just scanned as the joke to me, like, the punchline. Like, I just, it, it, it didn't make me feel, like, any outcry. Looking back now, it's... Even it's Hamlet. Yeah. Right. Hamflip, sorry, I'll let you talk. No, 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 no. Hamflip, who I keep saying you need two weeks off the Fed, you're obsessed, <laughs> you're addicted. Even Hamflip with the authority stuff and WrestleMania thirty to him was, was the same as me. It's like you've done it. You've done it to prevent a hijack and the PR disaster of people walking out to Romania. We didn't believe it. We didn't mm. feel anything for it. The authority was for me and him alike. I can't speak on his behalf because we've talked about this a lot was, I don't care. I don't even feel like this outcry mm. or this like, you can't do that to Daniel Bryan. It's like, you just don't feel like that mm. anymore. Um, and he was like, oh, I'm done. I, I might be done. And then NXT kept him. Yeah, NXT along, kept yeah. him engaged in it. Um, he needed NXT. Otherwise, he would have quit for the first time. And he was a pretty brave. 2013. Brave movie you to go to to pick thirty because it can't survive two thousand and four, <laughs> two thousand and nine. Looking back now, obviously, wow, you got to go to WrestleMania thirty. You got to see Daniel Bryan finally big, win the big one and top and tail WrestleMania, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And oh, the Undertaker, the streak ending. Da, 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 da. There's a an alternative reality where Taker just beats Brock, right? And it's you know it, it could be a great match, um, but not notable it's just another notch on you know his streak and triple h just beats brian in the opener and they go right enjoy well, you've had that yeah enjoy and you know what? Randy Orton. <laughs> the thing is like you had the momentous match results and the happy ending if daniel bryan had won well he did win if daniel bryan had stayed healthy you know what was going to happen in 2014 in SummerSlam? They're going to move for move, do the Brock Cena match, but with Brian. Oh, yeah, of course. That's what they were going to do. That was the plan. It was not like this. It was the false dawn again, but I knew it. Oh, Cesaro's won this, and the Shield are still strong, and Brian's the man. Even at the time, I was I was saying to Francis, that was a great show. This will happen, this will happen, this will happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't th come out of that show thinking, well, new dawn's happening. Mm. I didn't even feel that much. I was like, I got to see two great... Danielson matches, and I'm happy, but I didn't feel like, are oh, they finally been told by the fans, you know, they need this to stop the taking the yeah, piss and yeah. you've crossed that line. I didn't emerge, for, I didn't fly home going, well, I can't wait for Raw next week, it's all changed. <laughs> I knew it then. I was just happy to be in America with my new wife, yeah. enjoying all that food, drinking loads, um, watching Danielson be Danielson. That was the limit. I didn't think of it as New Dawn. Mm. Last year's WrestleMania was bad, but they're really going to change. No. So, WrestleMania 29 slash The Authority. Great question. Thank you for that, John. Thank you. Uh, thank you for all the questions today. Apologies if we didn't get to them. Thank you for all your donations as well. We wouldn't be able to do it without that, that sort of thing. Um, if you want to continue your conversation with us, you can do so on, as I said, X at WhatCultureWWE. Watch, they can follow both of us. You can follow Michael Sidgwick at... 
M. Sidgwick. You can follow me at Adam Wilborn. You can follow our brilliant producer at It's Adam Nicholas and send your well wishes to Michael Hamflet as he gets better ahead of WrestleMania at Michael Hamflet. Uh, at, what could surgery. You, <laughs> at What Could You Do? Best wishes. Got the sniffles, basically. Um, subscribe to What Could You Wrestling wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. But for now, as I said, thank you for all of your questions. My thanks to Michael Sidgwick. Thank you for joining us. And we will see you soon.